Welcome to Holy Trinity Dramore. And you see our theme for today is living in Christ, which is, uh, fits in very well with the three announcements that I want to pick out that you've seen on the screen already. But let's just, two of them are really practical ways of living in Christ. So can I remind you, support the food bank. There are lots of people less well off than us. So can I just uh, endorse that in the food bank? I see there's a new uh, work has begun, donations of used clothes and shoes for Fields of Life fundraising. And please contact Peggy. So that's one aspect of living for Christ. But the other one, which I think is very special, uh, and there was a, there was a comedian, uh, a Welshman, and his catchphrase was, I was there. And I'm going to be proud to say in September, I was there because I plan to be there. So in September, 8th of September, 7 o'clock at our mother church, the cathedral in Inniskillen, Peter Booth is going to make that big step from being a lay person to being an ordained minister. Now Peter's been here, he's known to you. So if any of you'd like to come, I'm sure he'd be delighted if you would support him that night in the cathedral as he becomes a deacon and starts his clerical career. Uh, so we'll, we'll all be there, we'll support him. But let's all support each other and how are we going to do it? Because we're going to sing Alleluia. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, here's the scepter, here's the throne.
Let us pray the colic for purity. Almighty God, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us affirm our trust in God's mercy and confess that we need forgiveness. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The collect for the twelfth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and given us those good things which we are not worthy to ask, save through the merits and mediation of Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. The first reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 15. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, <coughs> hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, this is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St John's Gospel, chapter 6, beginning at verse 51. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, 
So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Give me the faith which can remove. We'll sing together. And now may the words of my lips and the inspiration in each one of our hearts be acceptable to the Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good good. good to be back in Dremore on this mid-August morning and just to dumbfound me the sun's shining because when I wrote this I wrote given the weather especially the temperatures we've been having you'd be excused if you didn't think it was a mid-August morning although the sun's shining it's not really August is it I don't feel this year we've had anywhere near the temperatures 
It's meant to be the hottest part of summer, I think. I'm not getting that wrong, am I? I know it's different in here. What's worse is I'm told that we're going to go back to rain for the tail part of the week. In fact, most of the week. When you look at our summer, you don't get a real understanding of what summer is meant to be. And that feeling of looking at something but not really understanding what it is. That can apply to the weather, but it can sometimes apply to when you look at some texts in the Bible. And there's a few reasons for this, but I'm only going to give you one, and that is, and it's not the least of the reasons, is because Jesus explained this, that his message wasn't for everyone. Not everyone was going to understand and not everyone was going to obey. Some would understand it and others would not. And I think over the past few weeks, I've not been here every week, unfortunately. Uh, we're spread far too thinly at the moment. But we've seen that a few times in things that Jesus has been saying, people not really understanding him, the whole bread of life thing. Particularly that, as Jesus explained that he was the bread of life. And this week, he takes it a step even further. I am the bread of life. Yeah, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This instruction to eat flesh and drink blood was certainly not understood by the Jews at the time. And it continues to be not understood. I know historically Muslims have accused Christians of believing in cannibalism. They think we literally believe in eating flesh and drinking blood. Fortunately, well I hope fortunately we know that this instruction is not to be taken uh, is to be taken figuratively, symbolically even, not literally. I think the text gives us the clue to what's behind this. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I abide in them. Even though that was said before the Last Supper and it was said before Jesus died, Jesus already knew that those events were going to happen. So when he talks about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, he's referring to that instruction that he gave to his disciples, the instruction that we now follow to remember his death in this ceremonial meal that we call the Eucharist or the Holy Communion. If I can reinterpret that sentence of Jesus the way we now understand it, those that participate in this service, more than that, those who choose to remember that Christ died for them, for them personally, and those that accept that Jesus Christ is their Redeemer, they abide in Christ, and Christ abides in them. But what of abiding in Christ and Christ abiding, abiding in you? Well, if you want Christ to abide in you, then you must live the way Christ would have you live. And I think we look to our other reading to get an understanding. This morning's epistle reading shines a light on it. It starts, Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are 
evil. Paul regarded the days he lived in as evil. And I can't say that I think the last 2,000 years has changed that yet. Certainly things happen today that are just plain evil. I don't know if you watched the news this week on television, did you? Did you see it when the teenagers in the car in Bristol were pulled over? I don't wonder if any of you saw that item on the news. The police, they were quite aggressive in the way they stopped the car. I think they knew. They smashed open the windows of the car, dragged the people out, made them show their hands, and then they searched the car and they found the knives these teenagers were carrying. Now, they weren't little pen knives that you'd take to school to sharpen your pencil. They weren't even knives that you might use out in the garden for cutting and splicing and things. Yeah, They weren't even Boy Scout knives. These were huge knives. Every one of them was over a foot long. Probably about a foot and a quarter. I better modernise that, hadn't it? About 400 millimetres long. Whether it's in inches or millimetres. That's a big knife. And the design of these knives wasn't a practical working knife. It wasn't something you'd use as a tool. It was an aggressive weapon. Yes, we live in evil's time. Those knives only had one purpose, and that was to harm others. You can't do anything else with a knife like that but harm other people. So with all this evil around us, we have to be very careful that we don't get dragged into evil ourselves. As Paul says, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. I think we all know what the will of the Lord is for each one of us. That we lead good lives in love and charity with those around us. But, you know, trying to lead a good life can sometimes go astray for people. And to help prevent this, we're going to carry on with our theme a bit. We're going to talk a little bit about living a life in Christ. Firstly, before you can do this, you need to know two things. Firstly, what is this life Christ wants to share with you? And we've talked about that quite a few times here and in other churches on Sunday mornings. But the second, I think, is even more important. And actually, it's one of the things we find the hardest. The first half of it's easy. You need to know yourself. The second thing is not so easy. You need to be honest with yourself. Because sometimes we're not honest with ourselves. We tell ourselves lies, even. But Christ already knows your every weakness. And I'm sure, actually, you do. If you know this, and you know you need to be wise, and you need know to be careful not to expose yourself to any of those areas where you know you have a weakness. There are many areas of our human life where we can have weaknesses that we succumb to, but they will hinder our life in Christ. And I'm not going to go through a long list this morning. What I'm proposed to do is just pick on the one that Paul spoke about as an example. Not that I'm picking on people that have this problem. Paul chose drunkenness as an example. Having an alcoholic drink is okay. You can have alcohol. You can drink wine with your meal. It's okay for most people. But having too much alcohol is not okay. If you have too much alcohol, you become drunk. And then you become unable to control yourself. Once you're drunk, you may think that you're still in control. And I confess, when I was a young man, there were a few times, and I clearly wasn't. Yeah. In fact, I can remember, I think in my 20s, so that was a very long time ago, 
It's a wonder I can remember back that far. I can remember once, and I was with a group of other young men, and we were in Paris. And, you know, we did such a good job of drinking red wine that when I finally chucked them out of my hotel room and got in the bed, the bed spun round and threw me out. Oh, it was horrible. I couldn't get into bed, I was that drunk. Wasn't that terrible? All I could do was walk, and I walked, and I walked the Paris streets till the morning. Now, strangely enough, I actually got rewarded for that. Do you know why? Because when I was staggering back up the steps to go in the hotel, my German boss was walking down the steps, walking out, and he said, good morning, Colin, good to see you up so early. And I said, yes, Hans, and staggered inside. You're not always that lucky. Sometimes when you're that drunk, you do something really stupid and it haunts you for the rest of your life. It's not very wise, is it? You don't make good rational decisions at these times when you're facing your own personal weakness. I watched a celebrity on the television this week and he said something that really rang a bell because this celebrity admitted being an alcoholic. And he said this thing, I can only be in control of the very first drink. Do you hear that? I can only be in control of that very first drink. What he discovered was, if he wanted not to be a drunk, he had to control that first drink and not drink it. Yeah? Isn't that an obvious one? Makes sense. Exercising control, being wise. Now, if we know ourselves well enough, if we're prepared to be honest with ourselves, we can recognise those things that represent a danger to us to ensure that we don't let them take control. Yeah? It might be drink, it might be drugs. It could be gambling. But there's other things that can get in the way, can't they? Anger. You know, if there's something that makes you raging angry, well, try not to go there. Walk away. Be wise. Whatever the danger is, whatever your personal little addiction is, or your weakness, recognise it for what it is. To live in Christ, you need to steer away from that. And two, let's go back to where we were. Jesus abides in you. Talk to him. He already knows. You know, it's not like you've got to come to me and tell me something horrible and have that embarrassment. Jesus already knows. It's not embarrassing to tell Jesus what's wrong with you because Jesus knows yeah? Go and discuss them with Jesus in prayer. One of my favourite hymns, and I'm going to use it to sum up, is What a Friend We Have in Jesus, All Our Griefs and Pains to Bear. What a privilege to carry to everything to God in prayer. No truer words, are there? Seek his help in dealing with your life, so that you can live a Christ-like life. You can abide in Christ and Christ in you. Amen. I'm looking over there and she's moved. <laughs> Didn't know you were going to do that. Okay, good. I am the bread of life. We're going to sing that together. So let's stand and sing. I am the bread of life.
we will affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. One God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we pray for the church worldwide. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that your glory may be proclaimed through you. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those known to us in need of your touch, and in the silence we bring them to your throne of grace. We think especially for those we know in this parish who are sick at this time. We pray for those who, who mourn, especially the Gilland and the Deasley families on their bereavement. And we pray for all who are struggling at this time and in need of your grace. Stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who those who are and hope. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Christ is our peace. 
He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offertory hymn this morning is What a Gift of Grace is Jesus, my Redeemer.
invite you to join me in prayer. Please sit or kneel as you feel most comfortable. Let us pray. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we eat, we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him, and he in us. He opened wide his eyes upon us. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Take it, bread. You gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine and gave thanks. And said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us a remembrance of the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us remember you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise and lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of old and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen. 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 The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Remember that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. To the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you, preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. 
the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Preserve your body and soul to everlasting life. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ shed for you.
Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual bread. Body and bread. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>